So today, I'm going to tell you if held can hold your attention. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're talking about a brand new VOD release, Held. Let me know in the comments before we begin what your thoughts on this movie were, if you already saw it or if you were planning on seeing it, and make sure to hit that thumbs up button if you like these reviews as it helps me out immensely by getting my channel out there. And if you're new here, I hope you consider hitting that subscribe button so you can stay up to date with reviews of new releases, older films, hidden gems, and so much more on a near daily basis. But let's jump right into it and let's talk about Held. This stars Jill Aubrey and Bart Johnson as Emma and Henry, a couple whose ailing marriage is put to the test when they are held hostage in an isolated vacation rental by an unseen voice that commands their every move. Jill Aubrey also wrote this film, and it's directed by Travis Cuff and Chris Laughlin, whose other films I'm not familiar with, unfortunately. Now, I've heard mixed things about this movie going into it, but I didn't see a trailer, and outside of a few reviews, I only knew so much about it. But this is also a horror movie, and I like horror films, so I wanted to give this a shot. And I'm gonna say up front, I think this movie's going to have its audience. It acts like a mix of Saw and Hush. You have the voice giving this couple commands, making them act out certain scenarios, which is where the Saw vibes come from. And meanwhile, it's an isolated home in the middle of nowhere, and it involves people breaking into the home in order to set some of this stuff up which is where I got some of the Hush vibes. And that's not so much of a spoiler, as it's pretty early on in the film. As this couple spends their first night at the house together, while they're sleeping, we see someone come in and start messing around with Emma in particular. We know it can't be anything good, but it's all done in very tight close-ups, so we don't fully know yet right away what they did. Though that is when we do cut to the next morning and we start hearing the voice and the main events kick off. Now, this seemed like it would be my sort of movie, as I do enjoy Saw, and I also like the claustrophobic feel of Hush. Unfortunately, while this film really tries to channel both those films, it just didn't work for me at all here. In fact, I really didn't like this movie. Now, I will say, I found myself at least intrigued to see how everything would play out. I wouldn't say this film was boring by any means, but it took a nosedive for me not too long after the conflict kicked in. First thing was, I just couldn't get invested in either of these characters. I honestly found them to be severely underwritten, and were never given a reason to really care about either of them. We get a little more about Emma than we do Henry, but basically what defines these two are the fact that they have marriage troubles. We learn they have a son, and it seems Emma's somewhat estranged from him, but after a brief phone call they have with him in the opening, they don't really do anything with that story, and we don't circle back around to it. So now you have these two characters who are really underwritten, placed in these Saw-like scenarios, though instead of having to go through creative, grisly traps, they have to act out as if they're this happily married couple. And if they don't act in the exact order that the voice wants them to, there's an implant that's inside of them that will ring their eardrums and they'll be told to obey. And what didn't work for me is the fact that this setup comes across as sloppily executed, partially due to the film's tone. To be honest, for me, it comes across as a little silly that you have this really menacing voice that's clearly channeling Jigsaw and for half the film is just telling these two to just act out being like a happily married couple. There's more to it than that, but that's what the first half of this conflict entails. Now, had the film gone for a more ridiculous vibe from the get-go, this could have possibly worked. But this film takes itself so seriously that it comes across as corny and forced. And what didn't help too is that the acting here isn't all that great. Now, Bart Johnson is kinda, sorta okay for the most part. He didn't do anything to wow me, mainly because his character is really bland, but he also wasn't exactly terrible. However, I'm sorry, but I just didn't particularly care for Jill Aubrey's acting at all here. It's partially a directing and writing issue, I know, but the way she delivered most of her dialogue comes off as really melodramatic. Even from the opening, where she's just having a conversation with a car service driver on the way to the house, it still comes off as melodramatic. And after a while, it started to become very grating for me. So now you have not so great acting with a somewhat ridiculous scenario being played way too seriously with severely underwritten characters done in the style of a more established movie. And it's just not a winning formula for me. This seemed like something that should work for me, but it just didn't. 
This could have possibly been fun, but it's more of a drag than anything. Now, for the next part of this review, I do need to talk about spoilers, because it's hard for me to get into why I really don't like this movie without talking about the ending. I didn't like the movie so much to begin with, but the ending sealed the deal for me. I normally don't do this with my reviews of new releases, but this really drove home my overall opinion of this movie. So if you plan on checking this out and want to know nothing, skip to the end of this review for my closing thoughts and score, but I wanted to briefly discuss the second half of this film, so this is your spoiler warning. So. Here we go. As far as the villains of this movie go, it seemed pretty obvious to me right from the get-go that whoever's doing this to the couple must have some sort of close relationship to the family, mainly because the film takes place in this smart house with a pretty slick security system, and it didn't seem like the people broke in, but more like they waltzed right in, which means they knew easily how to get past the security system. And my initial thought was that Henry was involved, because as I mentioned, when we see the house being quote-unquote broken into, and they start messing around with Emma, we only ever see close-ups of her and not him, and then it immediately cuts to the next morning. Yet, we're led to believe that both of them are being messed with that next day. So I figured he had to be involved. Though on the off chance he wasn't, it at least had to be someone close to the couple. But it turned out my initial suspicion was correct. Now, we learn a little later on in the film where Emma stumbles upon this hidden room, which really isn't so hidden as all she does is move some clothes out of the way in a closet and she stumbles upon the room. And there's a television in this room where she sees a commercial for this organization known as The Eating Group, which is run by these men who offer a service where husbands can hire them to get their wives to obey them through the tactics we saw used on Emma throughout this. And when I say a commercial, I mean like it's legitimately presented like a regular TV commercial, which had me asking so many questions, such as how they're even able to get Get this message across for something this totally off the wall to anyone and get away with it for so long. Now, I guess it's implied that this is supposed to be some sort of secret underground organization or something to that degree, which I get, but the film never really properly explains that. Yet we do see that Henry did hire them to set this whole thing up and it partially stemmed from their marriage troubles with his fear that she was going to leave him. And we learn earlier on in the film that Emma did cheat on Henry with this younger guy named Ryan, and at one point before the big reveal, Ryan is kidnapped and brought to the house where Emma's forced to choose between killing him or killing Henry. And again, this just confirmed my suspicion, which seemed very obvious, that someone close, more than likely Henry, had to be involved with this. And while I was interested in figuring out at least for sure who it was, the tension was immediately cut for me at the same time because I knew this wasn't just going to be some outside force messing with them, similar to how Jigsaw can be in the Saw movies. I felt like I saw the ending coming in one way or the other from the beginning. And on top of that, the film just loses its credibility with me trying to sell the fact that this bizarre organization can go on for as long as they do, totally off the radar, without any clear explanation. And again, it goes back to tone. I think if the film went for a more over-the-top, maybe even satirical approach to this story, where explanations weren't as heavily required, they probably couldn't have gotten away with this. At best, they could have just given us a very rushed explanation and that would have worked. But this goes for something totally serious, where characters are supposed to have an arc, or at least Emma's supposed to have an arc, as the final act is meant to represent how she's now controlling her own destiny once she's free of Henry after killing him and the eating group. And it plays all this very straight-faced. So if you're going to have something as totally ridiculous like this plot twist or some of the other scenarios we see in this very serious movie, you need to do a little better to build that credibility. And unfortunately, that just didn't happen for me. And that's a big part of why I didn't like this. I think Held will have its audience, but unfortunately, I'm not in that audience. I found this film to suffer mainly from tonal issues, playing up more over-the-top-like scenarios in a way too serious matter. On top of that, it also suffers from some severely underdeveloped character development, as well as not-so-great acting and a lack of tension. It took a nosedive in quality for me pretty early on, and it wound up being an experience I don't care to revisit anytime soon. Held gets a 2 out of 10. 
So let me know, did you see Held or are you planning to see it? And what were your thoughts? Did you find this story engaging? Have you seen any good horrors or thrillers lately? Let me know in the comments below so we can discuss. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it. And for more movie reviews and film discussion, please make sure to hit that subscribe button to stay updated. Thanks for watching everyone and keep having fun with film.